Hi, I'm John. I'm Angela. And we're Heirloom Permaculture. On this episode of Permaculture Tools, we're going to show you how to build and use an A-frame level to find contour on your property. You'll need a drill, a drill bit that's sized accordingly to your hardware, uh, three bolts, uh, one will use three washers and a nut, and that'll be for the top. Uh, two more bolts with wing nuts uh, to allow you to take it apart and break it down for storage. Uh, whatever screwdriver or wrenches appropriate to the hardware that you use. String and enough weight to uh, hold your string tight, and uh, I'll show you that as we put it together. All right, so we're going to start uh, with three pieces of lumber. We're using one by two, just your common uh, one by two furring strips. Uh, just make sure you look for as straight of ones as possible. They're, they're cheap, they're about a dollar a piece, so no need to spend a lot of money on this unless you want to. You can use one by twos, one by threes, one by fours. I wouldn't suggest using two by fours or anything heavier just because of that, it's so heavy. Uh, but uh, we're going to start off by drilling a hole at the top and this will become kind of the, the pivot point at the top. Uh, the way we're putting this one together, we'll be able to collapse it all back down when we're done. So we're going to drill all the way through both of these so we can put a small bolt uh, all the way through. So just make sure everything's straight. We'll come down two or three inches from the top so that we don't risk splitting it. Which drill straight all the way through. All right, so at the top here, uh, we're just using a two inch bolt. Uh, I'm using a washer to cause the head of it to stand off a little bit. And having these fairly tight, not an issue. You don't want a lot of play in it. So we'll put that through, put another washer on. there another washer and a nut so this the top is going to if you're going to want this to be able to be collapsible it's going to have to move so that's why the the washers this also stands off because we're going to have to hang a string from here so that gives us somewhere to hang a string and it's removable all right, so we're going to tighten this down a little bit, but we're not going to tighten it down so far that it's hard to open and close the legs of the A-frame. Now that the top's put together, you can see it's starting to take the shape of the A-frame. Uh, how you decide how wide to have it is the wider the legs are apart, the less accurate it is when you're forming your contours because you're, you're reaching a farther distance, but it also uh, you progress faster so if you're making a really long run and you're only measuring a foot at a time uh, then it's going to take you forever to work your way so you want to just it's kind of personal preference and also how tall you want this uh, right about here I think it's comfortable and we're going to come across with the third piece at a, at a height where you can see what you're doing because you're going to be looking at marks on that leg, that uh, cross member. So right about here and about this high. So we're going to bring this back together and we're going to drill all the way through right here where this cross member will mount. This is our cross member. We just need the first hole couple inches from the end right in the center this will mount to one leg of the a-frame and then we'll set our legs how far we want and mark the other hole to drill so using wing nuts on these so that we can take this cross member loose and fold the whole thing up a lot easier without needing any tools when we're out in the field. All right, so at this point, back to setting them how far apart we want them. 
and we already have the hole over here to kind of get us level. You could put a level on here and get this perfectly level, but since we drilled those holes at the same time, they're the same distance from top and bottom. So key is just center that up. At this point, we know how, now how long this cross member needs to be, and we can mark and cut this off. Now we have our A-frame. All we need now is a string and a pencil and a weight. All right, so now we're gonna tie the string uh, to the top of it and we'll have enough hanging down below the cross member. We can tie our weights to it. using three old washers, large flat washers for a weight. Doesn't really matter what you use. You could use a plumb bob if you wanted to spend the money on that. Use this, spark plug, just anything that's heavy enough that if there's a little bit of a breeze, it's not gonna blow it around. And then you can get the string to settle pretty quickly uh, from swinging. Well, everything's put together. Now we just need to calibrate it and mark it. And then I'll show you how to use it. Before we can actually use it, we've got a calibrate it and put markings on it so you can tell if you're on level ground or not. To do this, it's best to start on as level of an area as you can. It just speeds up the process, and makes it a little more accurate, but you don't have to be on perfectly level ground. Uh, we, what we're gonna do is we'll make one set of marks and then we'll turn it and make another set. If they're off, if there's a space between, perfectly between them is, is centered and that's level. So the key to this though, is when we make the first mark, we're gonna flip the A-frame 180 degrees, and we need to make sure it's in exactly the same spot that it was. So we'll need to make a mark on the ground before we flip it so that we can put the feet exactly back where they were the other direction. So we'll do that first. We've got it marked where we'll want to be for the second time. And we're just going to calm the string and let it rest lightly against the cross member. You don't want it so tightly against it that it would keep it from moving left or right if it needs to, but you also need it right against it so that uh, you can make your mark. So, made a mark where the string was resting. and we're going to flip it around. And we put our feet right where they were the first time. And you just lean the A-frame towards you or away from you to get the string to rest against the cross member. Again, you just don't want to do it too, too drastically so that you don't cause the string to stop somewhere because it's being held by the cross member and not being hanging straight down, so. All right. So if you come up and look, it's hard to even tell that there's two marks. So we're sitting on nearly perfectly level ground to start with. So if we want to verify this, we can actually grab a level and see if that rings true. All right, so this is showing that we're just almost level, just barely off. That's what it looks like to me. All right, so I'm gonna simulate uneven ground. I'm gonna raise one leg off the ground a little bit and see how the string moves. So it's kind of the opposite of a bubble level where the bubble goes up if that leg's high. This, the string goes the other way. So you'll need it to go down. Now see how it stopped before it actually got back? It was dragging on the cross member. 
so you'll tip it to free up the string and another thing you'll need to be aware of is if you're wearing a cap watch the bill of your cap because as you're looking down this string you can hit that string so just be aware of that too all right so let's talk for just a second of why would you even need to use this tool uh, in permaculture you know we try to store energy uh, anytime we can so that could be in the form of rainwater also so a good use of this tool is for laying out swells on contour so that you can capture runoff and slow down that water spread it out and soak it in uh, so the reason you want to do that on contour is because you're not trying to create a ditch you're trying to create uh, a, a kind of a basin that will temporarily hold water and you want it to fill up evenly so if you've got a hillside going down you don't want to go up the hillside or at an angle because when the water hits it it's just going to run downhill so we're trying to to build this on contour so that it's level all the way across and this this may look like it's all one slope but there could be multiple kind of uh, dips and valleys and ridges to it so we need to identify that before we we dig any swells so if we want to dig a swell across here to capture any runoff come down the hillside we start from our desired point and then we just kind of lay out and see where it ends up and if that, that fits within what we're trying to accomplish. So we're going to start right here and we'll see where it carries us ac across this area. Alright, so we're going to start right here. Uh, this is what we've decided is the elevation that we want to use. So we're going to put a flag, uh, paint a mark, whatever, to our starting point. And then we need to move this other leg until our string is on that mark so that we know we're level. So we'll pick it up and move it. Come up and check. It's close, but it needs to go a little bit higher. So settle our string. And you can see every time we move it, it takes just a minute for the string to settle. That's why this process is a little slower, but it's a lot cheaper than using the laser level. You see I went too high that time. Just come back downhill just a little bit. Make sure we press it down firmly to the ground. We're not just resting on the grass. And again, this isn't going to be 100% accurate because there's lots of little, you know, if you set it in a boot print in soft ground, that's not exactly representative of the entire area. So there we're level. We'll take another flag. Put it there. And then what you want to do is you don't want to pick it up and move it to that one. You want to spin it around. So we're still on that last flag. Set it down here. Need to go downhill just a hair. There we go. And we'll just keep going all the way across however far we're wanting to go. All right, so before we get any farther, we're each going to take a flag and we're going to go over that way about 20 feet somewhere and see if we can guess where we think that this contour will end up. And it's a good exercise to start kind of calibrating your, your eye line and what you see uh, because you'll be surprised how far off you, you'll actually be most of the time.
All right, your guess. Think I'm too high, do you? Uh, probably so, maybe so. Maybe? It's hard to guess, it really is. If I'm wrong, it'll be the first time. Just kidding. <laughs> It's like we're both too high. Pretty close. It's really close. All right, so let's see how far I was off. You were closer. If I aim towards mine. You were too high. I was higher. So I was off by, you can do the math, over. Yeah. Five Whatever. feet. <laughs> so if we go from yours to mine, I don't know if we might have been on similar contour. As close as I can get to it. Yeah. You were about about half again higher off of me than I was off of where it ended up. So, right. so like I said. You know, it can it can trick your eye when you've got compound slopes. It's not just all running this way, it's going this way also. But if the whole topography is going this way, you don't notice it as much as it, just say running towards a low spot. So that's what we got high thinking we were trying to compensate for all this, not thinking about the whole thing going this way also. So uh, that's why you want to use this rather than just kind of do it with the naked eye whenever you're trying to lay out something that's actually on contour and level. So if I was actually going to dig this swell, we would actually soften out, uh, you know, all these where it jumps out. You can see what what's happening and why it does that. Uh, maybe on the camera you can see it, but there's a little low spot right there, so it goes to higher grade, comes back. If that low spot weren't right there, it would probably go right across it. You can also look at that as if it were to come out around this way rather than there's this high spot right here where these two flags are kind of a little ridge it dips a little bit and then goes back up if this weren't here it would go out around that way so whenever you actually come in and excavate whether it's by hand or with equipment or whatever you'll take a lot of that out based on how wide your swell is because it'll kind of absorb all these little differences so this is just small scale uh, example here and all of these little variations in the topography affect that. If I was doing this from here all the way over to say the house across the street, you're working on a lot, lot larger scale and you'll be taking readings farther apart and the size of your, your earthworks will reflect that. So by using the bolts and wing nuts, we can collapse this down for storage. So you can keep it uh, somewhere out of the way where it's not all sprawled out and taking up a whole, whole bunch of space.